Welcome to Sex and Soul, a podcast about all things related to sexuality, relationships, and the deeper dimensions of our lives. I am your host, Lynn S. I am a sexuality and relationship coach and mentor, as well as a tantric yoga teacher. I'm so excited that you are here. May Sex and Soul light you up from inside and change your life to be more orgasmic, joyful, and deep. Hey, love bunnies. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Sex and Soul, mm, hosted by your favorite sex coach, Lane. Yoo-hoo! I am here today, just sitting in my couch because, well, some of the episodes I do on my screen and you can see me and <laughs> some of them are just, yeah, they ask to be done while, while being in pajamas almost. Well, I don't do pajamas, <laughs> but just kind of not wanting to yeah, to be on the screen, you know, and it's also something that I do in my programs. I always, always tell my clients, especially while in group programs, you can have your camera on, you can have your camera off and you get to decide. And I think there's some, there's a specific juice that comes when I know that you can only hear my voice, you know, and I don't know if you know about human design, but I'm a manifesting generator and I have like an activated well, sexual center and then also my throat center. So for me, yeah, just, you know, leading through my voice is like a <laughs> a beautiful way uh, to, to get my message across and to get my magic to you in your ear. So yeah, welcome, welcome, welcome. Today I'm going to talk more about the orgasm gap, about mm, what you can do and why it is that you might be having difficulties orgasming and this episode I'm going to focus or will be focused more on difficulties orgasming with someone else yeah because there's a difference actually I have um, clients come to me when they have well some of them have difficulties orgasming on their own so during self-pleasure some of them have difficulties orgasming with someone else and someone have dif- some some people have difficulties orgasming all together, yeah. And so I have I have yeah success <laughs> stories, let's say, of people in all of those cases. So first orgasms and um, in all of those those cases. And then of course I always in my work just get you to wherever level you're at to the higher level. So I work a lot with women who have clitoral orgasms, maybe some vaginal activations already, but then I take them into the G-spot orgasms, in the cervical orgasms, in the full body orgasms, in the transcendental, ah, crazy, crazy orgasms. Mm, Okay. So today I'm going to bring it, uh, you know, back into the basics and and the foundational uh, kind of understanding of of how our sexuality works, basically, and education. You know that nobody taught us basically when when we are little. Um, yeah, nobody taught us that. Yeah, consent is important, boundaries are important, and and that pleasure is crucial. And so this week, actually, <laughs> going to going to just jump into this this week. Actually, yesterday, one of my clients, she had her. Well, she had had an orgasm already before in, in one of our sessions, but yesterday it was like this amazing orgasm that she had. And it was her first orgasm, orgasming on her own. And uh, so beautiful. So she was able to have some orgasms, with, but only with someone else. Um, yeah. And so what what made the click for her yesterday and also in the previous sessions which is something that I keep on repeating is that she actually let go of any focus of the orgasm so this is the thing this is the big thing when you are hyper focused on having an orgasm when you create a big story about ah oh, I cannot orgasm or or it's not easy for me whatever you know you get stuck in the brain yeah you get stuck there and it prevents you from actually being in the moment from allowing your body to actually go there and so yesterday you know for her it happened during a dearming session and I will talk about the arming a bit more maybe in the future but it's a beautiful, incredible healing practice. And she just had an orgasm during her de-armoring. You know, it was not at all the, the focus of that session. 
uh, I have other sessions with my clients, group programs and one-on-one -on -one clients where, yes, we go into these explicit orgasmic explorations. But yesterday in the arming, that's not the case. You know, the goal of the arming is really removing tension and pain and numbness in the vagina. And <laughs> this is so beautiful, you know, you know, in this healing it shows how much there can be healing and then and then there can be also bliss and healing and bliss are directly connected yeah and i think in in life that is that is the case um whatever you know dark emotions there are difficult emotions like sadness and 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 anger or so you know on right on the other side of that same emotion there is an equivalent of a blissful emotion yeah so the deeper you feel into the one difficult emotions the more ecstatic emotions you will be able to experience as well so yeah this is this is one thing one first thing like yeah when you are having difficulties orgasming on your own or especially with a partner just let go of that goal yeah and i mean talking about this you know what is what in some couples might be the case is that a man Okay, I'm talking about, because I work mostly with heterosexual couples, but this can also, you know, this is, is available in queer uh, situations as well. If you're queer and you're, you know, you're in the same sex and same gender relationship, it applies. This All of this, this stuff applies for you as well. Yeah. And I try to sometimes, yeah, I, I try to speak uh, and include, well, all genders uh, and all sexual orientations. But of course, I have to admit that my work is a lot with with heterosexual uh, cis people um so yeah that's a bit how i speak so so forgive me yeah for those of you who are yeah new and 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 you're queer and and yeah i i try yeah i try and and know that that i uh, yeah you can always tell me how i can how i can do better yeah <laughs> okay so what i wanted to say is basically that what can happen in a relationship is that one partner actually is in performance in his giving, meaning I see that mostly with men, that a man can feel like good when he knows that his woman has had orgasms, orgasms or three or four or five. And sometimes even just the question afterwards of how many orgasms did you have can create this feeling of like, ooh, I feel pressured to actually have orgasms. I feel somehow pressured to have even pleasure. And that can be, you know, and I know for most men, when you ask that question, it's not meant to, to create a pressure, but it can do that. It can really do that. And so what can happen if you receive this kind of questions, or maybe it's not even via, via question, but it's a more subconscious um, feeling that you know that your person is really like trying to give you something and focused on you, 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 and your orgasm and your pleasure, then it can feel overwhelming. It can feel like it is too much and you can feel pressure to have the orgasm and then you can go in your head about it. Oh, like, oh, fuck, it's not going to happen. How oh, it wants me to happen. Oh, I'm taking too much time, um, et cetera, et cetera. So <laughs> this can be a thing to let go of. Yeah, this can be a thing if you feel this from your partner to discuss with him or her or them. Yeah, very, very beautiful uh, conversation uh, to have. And I know the conversations about sex are not the easiest ones. So, I mean, because there, yeah, there can be ego pains and hurt. Yeah, people can get hurt, can feel hurt, even though, of course, I need to be open to receive some feedback. And there's some emotional maturity that is required, yeah, to have this conversation. Uh, and also just in some communication skills, yeah, to, to know how you best speak about these things so that your partner can receive, can receive your feedback. And so I... Want to say, I, I say this, this pressure thing, I mean, there's two things, yeah, this, the fact that you feel the pressure from your partner and that you feel that he or she, they're so focused on you having that orgasm and that makes them feel good about themselves, <laughs> which is kind of, yeah, kind of a, um, an energy that can, can not feel so good for you. Yeah. So maybe you recognize that. And maybe in general, there's just like this idea of only when there is an orgasm is the sex good. And this is something to let go of. Okay. Like really just enjoy sex for the connection that it gives you. Yeah, it doesn't matter whether it's, whether there's an orgasm or not. Just enjoy the intimacy, enjoy the connection. Um, for some of my people, yeah, even this week in, in beyond in, in my group, in my, my uh, group coaching program, that by the way, you can still join. It's really the last moments to join, the last week to join. <laughs> I uh, said to one, one of my clients, I told her like, you know, it might be necessary for you to have sex without for a month at least, yeah, 
agreeing that you're not going to have penetration, agreeing that you're not even going to do oral sex. And this sometimes is necessary, especially for the female partner, yeah, to feel that there's no pressure on that pe uh, penetration, that there's no pressure on the orgasm. And this can be a really a liberation and a change in your sexuality. And this can really allow you to feel into, hmm, I, yes, I, I know that I, you know, when he kisses me or touches me or, or, or she touches my thigh or whatever, there's no expectation to go into into sex and sex means penetration and etc etc yeah so removing the pressure removing the hyper focus on the one hand on orgasm but also the hyper focus on penetration can be such a big one yeah like for me this the the most delicious part and of course that depends on your erotic blueprint an erotic blueprint that is Jaya and Ian. Uh, sorry, I forgot Ian's uh, last name and, and Jaya's last name also, but it's Miss Jaya. Check it out because it really helps you to understand what kind of preferences you have in your sexuality. And some of us, I mean, I, I listened to an interview um, between Cam Fraser and, and Ian. Um, Cam Fraser is an amazing male uh, sex, sex coach, actually. Um, you can check him out as well. And they spoke about the fact that actually in the erotic blueprints, um, there's this idea that we have a preference, but actually Ian said like, actually we're all shapeshifters. So we all like the good stuff, maybe, probably, but we're actually just not exploring it. So that, that you know, we probably all of us have some 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 yeah tendency to love kink or to love the sensual or to love to love the energetic or to love the sexual which is a more genital fake focused sexuality um yeah and most of us have just not explored all of these things so check out the erotic blueprint and check out you know the differences maybe between you and your partner and how you can actually connect uh, together and then related to that also just foreplay foreplay is a shitty word because it's like ah oh, the foreplay is the play before the real thing which is then penetration no that's bullshit i mean playing yeah everything beyond penetration and beyond, beyond genital touching is so amazing and so what i said earlier is you know having an agreement that during a month you're not having penetration yeah you're not having even oral sex that can really push you into exploring all the other stuff all the other touches all the other ways that you can make each other just calm and crazy and mm, you know and so this is really beautiful invitation and, and your home play after this session <laughs> and especially if you try this let me know how it goes okay another thing i want to talk about is the fact that there's a difference between men and women yeah yin and yang we have you know, for, for women even to be penetrated and to be open for more deeper vaginal stimulations and especially the, the harder thrusting, yeah, which in porn is considered normal, but maybe that's not what you like that much. <laughs> yeah, important. Well, we need time before we are ready. We need time be, be, before we are warmed up, 40 minutes. So give yourself that time, ask for that time, knowing that there is a difference between men and women. Yeah, men are more um, in general. Yeah, I'm generalizing. It's not always the case, but because they have the external, you know, penis that becomes erect, they have this direct association with their sexual arousal. And for us women, it's more internalized and we are, socialized and culturalized um culturalized i don't know if you say that <laughs> but to have a slower arousal yeah we also have because of our culture more uh, breaks on our sexuality and this is you know the last things I'm, I'm speaking on are things that come from come as you are yeah uh, a very important book from from emily nagoski nagosaki no nagoski i think is her name sorry i'm bad with names but yeah at least i remember the title of the book very important book for all of us to read about especially useful if you have issues uh yeah orgasming important book to read and to know that you have breaks in your sexuality and that especially for women we have more sensitive breaks and you want to learn in your sexuality how you can let go of the breaks yeah make sure that you know what you need to be able to be open for physical touch for example and that's more context stuff yeah that's more like okay i want to my room to look good i want to know that i've that certain tasks i don't know in the household are finished or i want to you know feel a certain way and have a certain connection 
with my partner before I'm open to actually receive his touch or, or their touch. Yeah, so go go and read that book. And yeah, remember the importance of a long enough foreplay and stimulation, more time and the difference between men and women. Um, another thing <laughs> is really self-pleasure together. Yeah, self-pleasuring together is so beautiful. Well, of course, you need self-pleasure on your own. I repeat that, I think, probably in every of my episodes. Um, but, and that is, of course, crucial to know yourself, yeah, to know your own erotic um, map, yeah, to know your own pleasure maps in your body and to expand them, yeah, to expand your orgasmic capacity. But then also you want to be masturbating in different positions. This is important for men as well, because man, if you are just masturbating, especially also in front of a screen, yeah, this, and if you, for example, suffer from premature ejaculation, this can be the case that well, you only masturbate in a, a sitting position, whereas the sex itself will happen in different type of positions. So there's this beautiful practice of actually masturbating while you are also standing up, while you're laying down, while you're even in a doggy position, yeah? And so this helps you to actually create and expand your orgasmic capacity by practicing this on your own, okay? This self-knowledge and this expanding and, and this exploration in this way. And then this masturbating together is so beautiful. Oh my God, it's so hot also, yeah? Because you can really see how your person is, you know, likes to be touched. And I know so many couples who have never done that. They've ne never really had a session just doing that, only doing that. It is so hot and you can look at each other, you can look in a mirror, you can combine these things and this will actually really allow you to create this sense of safety also, yeah? If you ha have difficulties orgasming with someone else, you kind of, because it's kind of, you know, vulnerable also to show yourself. Of course, it's vulnerable, not kind of, it's vulnerable to show yourself, you know, touching yourself and showing your, 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 your face and looking at each other. It's like intimate, yeah? And so when you go in that together, it's like a beautiful way to, on the one hand, show yourself and allow yourself to be seen as sexual, as enjoying, as, you know, your face changing, your sounds changing, your body changes. And that helps you to then afterwards, when you come back into partnered sex, to actually let go more because you've seen each other in this more intimate and vulnerable way. Yeah. Does this make sense? Let me know. Yeah. And so another point that I wanted to, to mention actually is like the fact that maybe while well, in your sexuality, there's attachment styles that show up and, you know, the attachment styles, it's, I mean, there's, there's three, well, four actually, but today let me talk about three. Well, one of them is that you're securely attached. Um, yeah. You're secure in your attachment. <laughs> the other one is that you are anxious, anxiously attached. It means that you're afraid to be abandoned. Yeah. It's also called the wave. Um, or you can be afraid to commit and that's also called the island. Yeah. And so we all tend in one direction or another. And depending on our, the type of relationships we're in, we can be either more anxious to be committed or anxiously, you know, to be abandoned. And so this can show up in your sexuality. And especially for those of you who are, let's say, anxious to be yeah, afraid to be abandoned and you have been probably abandoned in your life. Yeah, that's the reason you're only anxiously attached and only a wave when, when these things have happened to you in your childhood, then you might be really focused on the other in your sex. Yeah. Then it might be really difficult for you to receive. So in that case, and you know why? Because unconsciously, and Esther Perel speaks about these things. Yeah. It's like, you are afraid that if you close your eyes and you enjoy the pleasure. And this is very subconscious uh, stuff. Yeah. You enjoy the pleasure. Your partner might disconnect from, from you and might feel that he or they don't receive enough pleasure and they might leave you. Yeah. And so there's this subconscious deep fear of, oh no, I will be abandoned when I close my eyes and I enjoy my sexuality and I'm, I enjoy the pleasure that, that they, they give me. And so this is again, why sexuality goes so deep. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's so deep, this, this, this getting to know yourself 
from this sexual perspective, you actually get to know yourself on the deepest levels. Yeah, all of the inner stuff that you might be <laughs> ignoring or trying to ignore, it's going to come up. Yeah. And so, again, is this showing as pleasing your partner or this can be showing as pleasing uh, your partner, focusing on them all the time. And so you want to be practicing then creating this link between safety and pleasure, knowing that sacred selfishness is crucial. Yeah. And that's even when you're giving oral sex, for example, can you enjoy oral sex while you are giving it? Yeah. That's so beautiful to do. And this is what makes oral sex amazing to receive for your partner is when they feel that you are actually enjoying it fully. Yeah. <laughs> this is such a big one. Let me know if this lands. Yeah. You can enjoy it when you're giving and when you are fully, of course, receiving oral sex. Let yourself enjoy it fully. Know and feel that you have all the time, all the time in the world to either for nothing. Yeah. And there's no orgasm that needs to come. You can just enjoy it that moment. And so for some couples, I tell them, some of my couples I work with, I tell them, put on a timer. And give each other 20 minutes of oral sex each. Yeah. And then you know you have this time. Yeah. And you know that there's no pressure for anything else to happen. It's just purely receiving. Um, yeah. So this is this is an important one as well. Yeah. And this might explain why, why you have difficulties orgasming with someone else. It might feel unsafe for you to focus on yourself, to receive pleasure because you have, you know, an anxious attachment from from your childhood and that's why let's say in my work this is what what if we ever work together we can i can help you with to go to these deeper parts yeah and so maybe some i've heard is from from clients of mine who said who say i uh, they're so sensitive yeah and so for the the smallest thing that their partner does wrong they get turned off so it can be by turn uh, be, being turned off by something you know their partner says or does and of course I mean one thing is there's a, of course this importance of speaking up and speaking um, saying and expressing what you would like to receive in sexuality is so important and saying pause and no when somebody you know does something that you do, you're not really enjoying and then there's also just the element of being very critical. I know there's a lot of women who are very critical and I'm like that actually. I'm, I'm, I'm working on that, yeah? Because it's something that I've inherited really that I, I see as a cultural kind of conditioning. And there can be a lot of judgments that we have about our partner in our relationship. And so in that case, that can show up in your sexuality too as being hypersensitive you know, and hypercritical and that doesn't help. Yeah. It's not coming from love in this case. Yeah. You're just, yeah, you're just very critical. It's, it's not, it's, it's in that case, it can be you, you know, and I'm, I'm counting myself in that group because I've, I, I have that tendency sometimes as well. Yeah. See this in all, um, humbleness. And so this is a thing like, are you willing to look at your judgment um, and here, what is important here is Byron Katie's work. Yeah, she says, Byron Katie, look her up, the work. She has these four super powerful questions that really lead to enlightenment if you really apply them like regularly. Oh no, this word, I knew when I would try to say it that my, my tongue doesn't like <laughs> oh, certain words. Like if you practice it, yeah, this can really break you open in a very deep way. But every judgment that you have about the world, turn it around. Yeah, turn it around. Like if you judge your man or your person or your woman, what what if that judgment is about you? What if you turn it around and you say this judgment about yourself? Could that also be true? And does it mean that it's actually about yourself? And also, you know, who are you and how would you feel if you were not thinking that about your partner? Yeah, probably more loving, probably, probably more acceptance accepting yeah and so huh, this is also leads to these deeper topics of you know tensions and and pain and even trauma between um you and your partner you and men in general yeah um of course we have the history of our society and patriarchy and misogyny and so on and that's still present in our bodies and we are now the generations that are healing this this shit yeah this stuff 
so this can come up i know i know that in my body yeah i have i have resentment towards men i have deep um pain actually and and anger you know anger that when men connect with me they just want to fuck me they just want to have sex and 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 there's there's energies of that inside of my body and it's weird because i've i haven't had this like very explicit problematic um situations in my life you know and of course i work with women who have that i i work with women who've been assaulted who have been raped and so that is the explicit way but most of us women in some shape or form we have still in our bodies in our nervous systems a fear of this of course objectification we are so object objectified of course still sexualized all the time um yeah in in the media and so on and online um and so in our in our deep love relationships yeah there can be there can be sadness or there, there can be some anger related to that that might needs need to be healed somehow uh, this is actually my 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 personal <laughs> my personal stuff coming up let's say or, or sharing a bit uh, about about that and i know that that is not related to the man i'm with at any moment it's not related to him yeah, it's related to somehow some shit from our society, probably from previous generations that somehow is still present in my body. Um, so yeah, this thing can show up in your relationships and, and this can, you know, make you not trust man and not want to go in orgasm. Yeah, you might, orgasm is full surrender. Orgasm is letting go of your, you know, survival mechanisms. They go offline. So again, this this safety and this 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 trust that might be there can can show up yeah <laughs> yeah i know this is deep stuff so let me know if this lands at any moment yeah and so what what is the way um through that in a way is that you want to create safety in your own body you want to create of course emotional safety with with your partner with the lover you're with um you want to notice and feel into what you need to feel safe um and you can actually practice that in it's all embodiment yeah so that means that it's all about finding these moments of safety within yourself and then gently taking steps and gently sharing yourself with someone else yeah so you go into um into kissing maybe or caressing and so on and if at a certain moment you notice and you can only notice that when you are present in your body so if you notice that there's unsafety you slow down you even stop, you take a break, yeah? And then you can activate your heart. You can breathe in your heart together. You can also just let your partner know the, the type of words that you would like to hear from, from him or her or them during during lovemaking or or when, when you feel like you're closing off a little bit and you're dissociating a little bit. Like what can be helpful in those moments to hear and what kind of, of course, touch do you need and what kind of other things you might, might you need to come back to safety and to come back into feeling open to continue the exploration. Yeah, yeah, this is important. <laughs> Very slow, slow explorations in, in that case. And so if you're worried about, you know, doing it right, um, it's the same thing. It's kind of this, yeah, well, one, please know that, you know, for a man, the most hot thing for a man who's, I would say, the good lovers, because <laughs> maybe, yeah, you've you've ex you've experienced other things with men, but I mostly know men that really want to give me a lot of pleasure, and so your ability as a woman to be in your pleasure and to enjoy yourself is what will give him him pleasure. So it's almost this, you know, <laughs> yeah, this this kind of. Uh, invitation to go into this sacred selfishness yeah to develop that ability to stay within your pleasure and to really really enjoy it and that being enough and so if he is not there if he's not that kind of lover and he's he doesn't really care about your pleasure then you're not a good match you know then maybe it's not the type of man that you want to share your precious body with your precious sexuality with and of course, you can still stay in that relationship, but then, then of course, you're, you're self-sabotaging in a way. Yeah. And by the way, people who are more, let's say, more 
afraid to commit they can have that tendency to to be a bit more self-centered in sexuality so this shows how indeed these attachment styles i was speaking about a little bit yeah not giving you a full introduction to these things but just touching upon the topics how they can express in sexuality okay and so another just thing that i notice in my work like when when women come to me and they have issues orgasming with someone else yeah most of the time it's because uh well they have difficulties having or vaginal orgasmic or orgasms which makes sense because i mean the clitoris is the most well you know has this kind of 10,000 finally there's there's studies that confirm that there's more than 10,000 nerve endings that are well concentrated in the glands of the, the clitoris you know the top part this tiny part of the clitoris is incredible so of course we have a, a lot of nerve endings in other parts of the vagina as well actually the cervix has a lot of nerve endings and it's numb for most people for most women so most women are disconnected from their vaginas, yeah, from the, the inside, the vaginal canal. So this is actually super important to reactivate. I just do this in all of my programs and my work with one-on-one -on -one clients also. Jade egg work, dildo work. You need to connect with the inside of your vagina. It's amazing. And then you can actually start claiming your sexuality and the penetration as something that is pleasurable. And something that happens for you, that you can actually crave this penetration in this the most delicious way, yeah? And so this is, again, this relation to not feeling pressured for penetration and to be with someone who can actually, yeah, feel you in that and is not giving you any pressure and is also just able to enjoy all, all of the other things. And that's what makes, what makes a, a good lover, yeah? These are things you can, you can talk about. And so connecting with your vagina really massaging yourself actually on the inside is super beautiful um and you can do this i mean i teach this to my couples and to my ladies also like i, I teach uh, yoni massage and i teach linga massage aka pussy massage and penis massages which you can give to yourself and then also give to your partner or give to a friend even <laughs> i've been there um where you are yeah actually very consciously massaging different parts inside of the vagina and there can be an intention of healing there can be an intention of pleasure there can be an intention different types of intentions um and even also for a man that's amazing to receive yeah for a man to just really focus on um yeah just receiving a penis massage and there can be all kinds of emotions that come up in that in that in that in that way because we have according to the taoist yeah, we have all of these uh, emotions that are stuck inside of the our, our genital areas and they connect actually with organs and so on. Yeah, um, yeah. if you want more information, or maybe I'll give more information. I had a, a beautiful Instagram post about it, but since my Instagram was, you know, still still gone, my my yeah, account, um, I'll be, I don't know if I'll be posting this, yeah, this stuff on my new account because I don't know what I can post or not post. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a bit tricky actually. But you can look it up, yeah, the acupressure points in, in the genital areas from the Taoist perspective. Or you can reach out to me and I can share the information. Yeah. Ah, so a last a last thing maybe, yeah, that can help you actually have orgasms with someone else is this kind of looking at sex as as this beautiful thing. Yeah. I think a lot of women have the feeling like, ah, oh, I have to have sex for someone for him for someone else and that's such a that's such a bus killing yeah that's such a, a mental thing that doesn't support yeah a, a, a beautiful sexuality you know your sex is, is is for you your orgasm is for you your pleasure is yours woman you know and and really creating that shift in your mind is so important and, and making sure that you also just explore fantasies and explore this mental arousal and this mental idea and this mental identity of yourself as a sexual being and whatever whatever you use to to have this sexual vibrancy and, and this connection to your own erotic aliveness you know for yourself first and foremost is so important and so welcome yeah so fantasies kinky stuff you know arouse your mind they always say it yeah your mind is the most um erotic erogenous zone the mind your thoughts positive thoughts towards sexuality, positive thoughts towards yourself, um, yeah, using fantasies, uh, thinking about what your desires are on, on a sexual level, even the most kinky fantasies you have. 
you know, allow yourself to go there. Like last night, I had this amazing fantasy, you know, I was touching myself. It was just like, ah, beautiful. And then afterwards, I wanted to send the message to the people I was thinking about. I was like, no, no, <laughs> Lynn, don't do it. Because, <sighs> yeah, of course, I mean, there's a yeah, beautiful fantasy. It's just making love with, you know, having several people adore you. That's my personal favorite. Yeah, I'm a Scorpio woman, woman, so... I have, you know, that kind of desires. <laughs> All right. Oh, I guess this is really the thing with not being seen on camera. I think it makes me even more slippery and more open. I, I feel. <laughs> Ah, I hope you enjoy all of the all of the information I'm sharing here, and I've I've been sharing today. Um, you know, go and explore your 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 sexuality with with your partner. Yeah, talk about it, communicate, give instructions, learn yourself, learn your own body, so that you can, you know, go for for a beautiful exploration and a new exploration. Yeah, create these new beginnings in your relationships, um, and or your relationship actually. Yeah. And know that you're not broken, yeah? Um, almost never are there, like, physical reasons for not having orgasms. It's mostly stress and context and not knowing yourself and all the things I've mentioned today and in the previous episode. Uh, but very rarely are there physical issues. Um, of course, if you want to, yeah, rule that out, go go and, and, and meet your doctor, gynecologist, of course, yeah, because there are... Yeah, there are hormones, there are there's uh, diets and all all of these things. There's medication actually that can have a big impact. Um, so that's that is of course uh, something I yeah you don't want to just ignore, if if that's your case. Yeah, um, I hope you deeply enjoyed uh, this podcast. Please let me know what you think. Please give me um, a rating. That's amazing. Share this podcast with the people that you think might enjoy it. And um, yeah, I'll see you soon. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> this was another episode of Sex and Soul. Yes, yes, yes. Mm, if you enjoyed this episode, then don't hesitate to check out Beyond. These are the very, very, very last days that you can still join this round. The next time I will be opening Beyond is probably only in a year if I will do it because I'm not sure yet. It's amazing the transformation and the orgasmic aliveness and openings and uh, that are happening in the group is just incredible. So check it out on my website and reach out if you have any questions. Hmm, and if you are not yet on my newsletter, then register for my newsletter as well. This is a place where I get also very personal and um, mm, other than that, I just wish you an amazing day, my love. Go and explore yourself. Feel this orgasmic aliveness. Uh, that is our existence, yeah? <laughs> See you soon.